Hi, folks. Hang in a while. This is Ray Walker from the Jordanaires. You're listening to TCB Radio Network.com. Don't leave. If you do, you'll be sorry for a short time. The rest of your natural life. Hello, all you Elvis fans. This is Krista Joy, founder of TCB Radio Network.com. And I'm your co-host of TCB Radio Network and Elvis tribute artist, Peter Alden. Welcome to the TCB Radio Network podcast. Get ready for some Elvis content and news you can use, where it's all Elvis, all the time. Interviews with authors, Elvis fan club presidents, artists, musicians, and of course, close personal friends of Elvis Presley, people who knew him, the man himself. Thank you for tuning in. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. It's time for the TCB Radio Network Podcast. Music television shows like 77 Sunset Strip and My Three Sons and many others. She also co-starred with Elvis Presley in the MGM film Kissing Cousins. And that, as she states on her website, is the story dreams are made of. We are honored today to have her on TCB Radio Network to tell that story that dreams are made of. Plus, we'll talk about her book, which you can pick up at CynthiaPepper.Weebly.com or on Amazon. And we'll also also ask some of the questions our listeners sent in for her as well. Cynthia Pepper, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Looking forward to this. Well, Cynthia, can you tell us a little bit about your career? And now you actually came from a showbiz family. Right. My... uh... My dad was in vaudeville, and my mother uh, was a dancer on Broadway with the Ziegfeld Follies and Billy Rose, and uh, and then my dad, uh, it has nothing to do with me, but my daddy was married to Ginger Rogers. He liked liked dancers, I guess, because my mother was a dancer. That was the first marriage for both, and uh, I have a cute story in my book about meeting her years later, but she... uh, uh, then, then he married someone else, then he married my mom, and I, I, that's all I've known is show business, and um, they encouraged me, and I, I really don't have any other skills other than that, so that's how I made a living, and I uh, still enjoy talking to the, you know, to the fans, the Elvis fans, and the, the different shows that I do, and uh, I went to Hollywood High, grew up in Hollywood, went to Hollywood High with some other actors you might know, um, Linda Evans, uh, Mike Farrell, different people. And then um, got an agent and started working in small parts. And then I had a show called Margie on ABC. I played a high school girl in the 20s. And that went for a year and then went rerun another year. And then um, My Three Sons, of course. I did, I think, about 11 episodes of My Three Sons. I played Mike, the oldest girl's uh, next-door neighbor girlfriend. Okay, yeah. And then uh, Elvis and then other things, Perry Mason, Wagon Train, Flying Nun, Adam's Family, different things of the 60s and early 70s. And so, I mean, um, of course, Elvis is is my guy, right? I mean, <laughs> who well, wouldn't remember everything about working with Elvis? Well, before we get to Elvis, because and this, okay. is, this, is, another, this is another entertainer who's near and dear to my heart, okay. uh, because I do a tribute, I understand that you also knew David and Ricky Nelson. I went to school with David and Ricky. Dave, Ricky was a year older, and David was, uh, I think, two years older, two years older than me. Now, we're talking about the 50s, the good old 50s, you know, the happy day times. Right. And uh, we used to watch him play basketball, and my girlfriends and I had the biggest crush on him, uh, of Ricky. And, um, yeah, and I went to with Stephanie Powers I went to school with. Uh, we had a good group um, at that time. Uh, and I, I didn't know him outside of that. And I didn't date him or anything, but he would come to our, our gymnasium and he'd, he would play basketball, uh, Ricky Nelson. Right. That's that's fantastic. My my mom and her sister, when they mm-hmm. were teenagers, would, would get out movie magazines and have arguments over he was, who, was, who was cuter, Ricky Nelson or Elvis. So <laughs> <laughs> They had that same look. They really did. Uh-huh. The pout. <laughs> they had that same look. And I, the first song I heard Elvis do was Heartbreak Hotel. In the mid, I think it was '56, uh, and, and you'd, in, in those days you'd go. I think it was Sunset Boulevard. You go into a, a, this uh, music uh, shop, and you put you know you go into a little room and you play these uh, records, and that's and I'm like, oh my god, I had the biggest crush on Elvis then, mm-hmm. you know, not knowing or thinking that 
someday I'll be working with them and become a friend, basically. Yeah. So, well, before we get to, to that, though, yeah. I know you graduated, and then you got the part on My Three Sons, and then uh, Margie. What was your first film that you did? First film I did was uh, uh, Take Her, She's Mine with Jimmy Stewart and Sandra D. Holy You God. know Sandra D. I played her roommate. Wow. And I was under contract at 20th Century Fox. In those days, I was like the tail end of the contract players. So they made me go brunette because uh, uh, Sandra was blonde, of course. And then Jenny Maxwell, who was, you know, in um, Blue Hawaii, played the, the bratty child, a uh, young girl. She was also a roommate of of uh, Sandra D. Oh, and she was blonde. So they said, Cynthia, you've got to go brunette. So the, the, the contrast. So I did. That was fine. And um, so I, I, that was what I did. I, I only did three movies. I did a movie made for television. Then I did, uh, of course, Kissing Cousins. But mainly my mainstay was television. I did Miss Congeniality here in Vegas 2005 with Sandra Bullock. I only had two lines, but um, it was a thrill. you know. And I did get credit, so I thought, well... I don't try to, you know, make it sound like I was co-star or anything with her, but <laughs> but it was, you know, with a thrill. And then my husband says, oh, did you get her autograph? I said, honey, you don't go up to, you're not supposed to do that, you know. Right. I have your autograph when you're working with someone. But she was very, very sweet and very pretty. And uh, so television was my mainstay, was what I did. Um, I did a play in um, a summer stock with Ed Burns, you know, Cookie Burns. Yeah. Yeah. And David Hedison, we did a, a four-person play. We, we, it was called Summer Stock in those days, in the late uh, 60s. Uh, I, I digress here. But anyway, the whole 60s, last the 50s, 60s, and early 70s, I, I was working a lot. David Hedison, was he, was he on 77 Sunset Strip? Was that what he was on? No, he wasn't in that, but that he was uh, in the play I did. Okay. Um, no, he was in um, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. I ah, think. that's it, Voyage to the Bottom yeah, of the Sea. Yeah, what a nice man. And I saw him at the Hollywood show, which is a collector's show in L.A. Um, they have it three or four times a year that I go to at least once a year. And uh, you, you sit and you talk to fans, and he was there. And I, I had my picture taken with him again. We, we met, uh, reminisced about, you know, working. And then Ed, I'd see Ed once in a while, Ed Burns. Wow. So I did that, and then I did a, a show called U.S. Steel Hour, which was, now this is the 62 or 3, and you can find it on YouTube, I couldn't believe it, my uh, co-writer, Victor Hansen, said, you know, you're on U.S. Steel Hour, and those were the days where it was live, live, you go from, I mean, it was nationwide, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, filmed, so you, you would, once you did your scene, if you're in the next scene after the commercial, you'd run to the next set, well, Martin Sheen was in it, George Siegel, and Tommy Sands, wow. who was then married to Nancy. The thread of Elvis is through my whole life. It's amazing. It really who was is. married to Elvis. You know, I mean, who was in the Elvis movies? So she and I, we we rehearsed in New York uh, for about three weeks, and then you film, you not know, film, you you do the show live that one day uh, through the day, and. Um, I played his girlfriend, and you can pick it up if you go on U.S. Steel Hour, and on the on the internet, it's just amazing, and it has um, it's called Inner Panic, I N N E R P A N I C. It's, it was fun to see because I was twenty, I think it was sixty two because I was I was twenty two years old. I, oh my God, you know, I said I can't believe, and some things I don't remember doing, you know, saying because it was so long ago. And the one who played Tommy Stan's mother was Glenda Farrell. Who played Elvis's mom in Kissing Cousins? Oh, Mammy. I mean, you know, you <laughs> are you are definitely connected to Elvis. It is, it, and, and listen, look at this. And and Yvonne Craig, who was my dear dear friend, because uh, then we we traveled. Uh, it's all this is made mainly in my book, Pigtails, Presley, and Pepper. But this is a plug. But um, Besides the family history I have, which are some, you know, um, wasn't all that great with a lot of people. You know, everyone has um, a dysfunctional family. I did, to a certain extent, a lot. But anyway, so when I was 12, we lived in Hollywood on Holly on Vine Street, and my neighbor was Jimmy Boyd. Jimmy Boyd is a young boy that sang I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus, okay? Mm -hmm. That made a big hit in the 50s. And as adults... He ended up marrying Yvonne Craig. 
Oh. oh. I mean, it didn't last long, but they were married. I said, okay, it's my, my connection with Elvis started, I think it was 11 and 12 years old. Wow. It's just, it's just, and then it goes through on. You know, that seven to six degrees of Kevin Bacon, mm. where somebody knows somebody, somebody knows somebody, and that's just the way it is with Elvis. <laughs> You don't even so, uh, you don't even need six degrees. You're like one or two degrees. I, off. I'm one degree. <laughs> and I, I did you ever hear about my Jimmy Dean, my James Dean story? No, but go ahead and tell us. Should I tell it? Absolutely. It, it has to do with Elvis, but uh, I mean, I, I didn't know if you wanted to graduate, graduate, go into Elvis, you know, the movie. But um, when I was 15, my dad, you know, being in show business, knew um, uh, Chill Wills and Dub Taylor who were old character actors even then, and he, they were making the movie Giant with Rock Hudson, you know, Elizabeth Taylor, James Dean. Right. And at Warner Brothers, and we lived in Hollywood. And he went over to see his old friend, and it was 1955, and it was my birthday, September. And the phone rings, pick it up. My daddy said, um, and he was from Texas, my dad, so we call him daddy. And he said, honey, someone wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. He hands the phone to somebody, and I said, hello, and the man says to me, is it Cynthia? I said, yes. He said, well, this is James Dean. He said, "My, your daddy said it was your birthday, and I, I nearly dropped the phone, and I said, uh, yes. He said, how old are you? And I said, 15. <laughs> I kind of stuttered, and he said, well, I just want to wish you happy birthday. And I said, thank you, and he gave, he gave the phone back to daddy, and then two weeks later, he was gone, you know, in his accident. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. I told that story to Elvis because Elvis pulled a trick on me, and I tried to get back at him that something that I could do or say that he couldn't do. Because, you know, James Dean was his idol, his acting idol, uh, maybe one of them. And uh, I said, well, I know something. I I did something you didn't do because I had to get back at him for a trick he pulled on me. Wait, what was the you trick know, back- he pulled on you? Let's back up. Okay, back up. <laughs> uh, when we were rehearsing the, the flip I do mm-hmm. with Elvis. Yeah. And I mean, it's just very short, but you rehearse things, you know, for hours. That's like, you know, 30 seconds on the screen. Anyway, so we were rehearsing this one time away. I've told this story before, but I'm telling new new people then. Yeah. Uh, uh, away from everybody on the sound stage, and I was practicing the flip. And I flipped him, and it looked like he, he, lay, he fell flat on his head, you know, on his back. And he didn't move. And I said, oh, my God, I've killed Elvis Presley. Oh, I said, no. what, what am I going to do? You know, I'm going to have to get the witness protection or get out of the country. Oh. What, the mafia what am I going to do? And he just let me stew. It must have been about a minute. I said, Elvis, wake up, Elvis. You know, and there was concrete on the floor. But and nobody was around. You know, it's a big sound stage, and you go to a corner, and nobody can see and I went, oh, my God, finally about, and it had to be a minute. He woke up. He said, I got you, my little speckled pup. <laughs> and I said, you son of a gun. So I thought, how am I going to get back at him? You know, he did like, you know, practical jokes played on him. He loved to do it on other people. So I told him that story, you know, in a very quiet, you know, we had our conversations, and this was one of them. And I said, oh, I, you know, something I got a wonderful special phone call one time. Oh, what? What happened? And I told him, he said, oh, really? And I said, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you all. You'll just have to imagine, you know, what all we said. <laughs> and it was for a few minutes. And I got him back a little bit, you know. <laughs> Nothing bad, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, that was one of my stories. It was just, um, it was amazing. It, it's well, amazing now to look back that I had that history with him, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, is it? Blow, I'm I'm still blown away by the call from James Dean. That's oh yeah, yeah. So cool. and it, he was he only did what three films, and it was he was you know the it guy. Yeah, and I thought, oh. and you know till those this day I remember exactly what he said, and exactly what I told you is what he said. Mm-hmm. You remember certain things, like with Elvis, I remember conversations, not you know almost verbatim, but not every conversation verbatim. You know, you can't remember it's what fifty five years ago. With Elvis, uh, yeah. it's a long time. Well, but I mean, James Dean, even further back, he only did three films, like you said, and he's still the go-to guy for actors. Who oh, are, absolutely. Who are trying? You to... know what? He he started out and doing these uh, live TV shows. If you look at his uh, IMDb, or if you can find out the history, he did a lot of these live. They were very popular in those days. It was uh, Philco Playhouse. 
uh, I think it was something, a 90-minute playhouse, U.S. Steel Hour, different things, and that's how he started. Hmm. You know, it, a lot of them started with small, you know, parts, and then, and then he did the films. I think it was the three, right? The three mm -hmm. films. Yeah. And uh, so he was our, before Elvis, basically, he was our Elvis, kind of, as far as actors go. Mm -hmm. And Elvis did have that in him to be, have that, uh, the depths of him as an actor. He had it, but he just, they didn't, never gave him the opportunity to show it. So how he did you it. learn about Kissing Cousins? How did you get involved in that film? How did I get involved? Well, I was doing, you know, a lot of stuff, and I, of course I had an agent, and I'll never forget this either. Uh, it was a Friday, I'd gone to the store, and uh, I had a lady who cleaned for me in those days because I was working a lot, and she said, you called to call your agent. Uh, of course, you had, in those days, I'm talking about 1963, you had uh, uh, message people that you'd call up and get your messages from a real person. Not, it was automated, you know, you know, automatic with the phone. So anyway, I called uh, my agent, and he said, are you sitting down? I said, well, all right, I'll sit down. He said, well, I've got some news. I said, what? He said, Elvis Presley saw you on something, because, you know, he watched a lot of TV. And I said, well, yes. And he said, and he got a hold of us, he said, or his people, and said, she might be right. He didn't know who I was for this part in Midge Riley. Mm-hmm. And he said, my agent said, if you can get to Warner, to Warner's, to MGM Studio, which was, I don't know, 12, 15 miles, something like that, and, and go to the wardrobe, and if you can fit into the uniform, they are waiting for you, then you've got the part, you're co-starring with Elvis. Well, I, by the time I picked myself up, I was very excited and nervous. Of course, I raced over there, and I could fit the uniform. The uniform was right, right there, made for me almost. And I usually, you know, when I did Margie, I had to audition for two months there were like 200 girls that got the part i mean that tried for the part and anytime you went you obviously read and you have callbacks and all that this was just fate i mean this mm. was amazing do, do you remember your first day on the set well i remember meeting him i was in my dressing room and there was some a dozen roses and it said to cynthia love ep and right away i think oh elvis has a crush on me <laughs> no. <laughs> you know you're you I was still young enough, uh, and, uh, and no, he sent it to all his all his leading ladies. Mm -hmm. So you know the door, the knock at the door. It was the first day, and he said something. I opened the door, and there was Elvis standing at the foot of the stairs with the, the assistant director, and he said, uh, "Elvis, this is uh, Cynthia Pepper. She's playing Mitch Riley." And I walked down, and I I just took, stuck my hand out, you know, to shake his hand, and he said, "Honey, don't give me an old hand. Give me a big old hug." And that broke the ice, and I thought, Phew, you know, this is going to be good. It's not. I was nervous, of course, uh, but I was a professional. I mean, I you know knew I had to know my lines. I had to you know get the um, the heartbeat had to be hidden. You know the <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So to to go with you know to do what I had to do. So um, and we shot for uh, I think it was uh, two weeks. We only shot for three weeks. All his movies were quick. Hmm. You know, they, were, they weren't a stretch. You know, it wasn't uh, Tennessee Williams or Eugene O'Neill. You right. know, they were, right. you know, they were just Elvis shows, and they were wonderful. I mean, clean, and uh, we, who knew that we'd still be talking about him today? You know, he, we had so many talks, and I know we had it with other people about, you know, whether people, fans remember me, he would say, when I'm gone, and he asked me that, and I went, well, of course, Elvis. Well, I didn't know 100%. You know, I thought, of course they will, but you never know. And mm -hmm. look at him. I think he's, I think he's more popular now than ever. That is, goes without saying, I think. But and, but like you said, I was a, a preteen when he died, but I was aware of him. And I, I remember thinking, mm -hmm. after he died, I better get to the record store and get a couple of those records because they're probably going to stop selling them now that now that he. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll never hear from him again about right, him again. Right. right. <laughs> They're going to stop selling his records now. <laughs> it was meant to be. You know, people, what they want to do, a lot of people want to put him on a pedestal. He was a regular man. He was a guy that I would tell people, if, if he were in a room with men and women and girls and everything, he would flirt with the, with the ladies and he'd talk, male talk, whatever that is, with guys. He was a regular guy, but he was Elvis Presley. He had that something that you can't buy, you can't learn. It's called, in the 20s, they call it the it. Mm, factor yeah. and he had that and it's something you can't learn and he had that and what was good that's the way I see it is that he didn't fully 
recognize that he had that, which made him the humble guy he was. I mean, he knew what he had to do when he got on stage. He knew he had to be Elvis. But he was a regular guy. He was false, you know, and, and everything that we do, um, that's wrong. He did, uh, you know, small things. But but he had, he, that he was Elvis. And uh, he would be very, very, um, I don't know, amused if he could look down and, and I'm a believer of that, that he could see what's happening and say, I was just a singer. What's all the fuss about? Right. You know, I mean, that's what, that's what made him endearing to us, I think. And one of us. He was one of us. You're listening to the TCB Radio Network Podcast, where we're celebrating the life and memory of Elvis Presley with a mission to share his legacy with the world. Hi, everybody. I'm Krista Joy, founder of TCB Radio Network, and I want to let you know that tonight's show is co-hosted and sponsored by PeterAldenEntertainment.com and PeterAldenLive.com. Peter Alden is a classically trained vocalist with a voice like velvet who performs everything from country to pop while specializing in the golden era of rock and roll. Based in Orlando, Florida, but able to travel all over the world, he can come to you. Please support TCB Radio Network by hiring Peter Alden for musical entertainment or to MC at your next event. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Peter Alden Fans. I, I think about the different co-stars like yourself or Yvonne Craig or, or some of these other people that that might have, like you said, it was Elvis Presley, and you know there there was like, wow, I'm I'm here with Elvis Presley, but then in 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 the movie, I believe you start off not really being impressed by him all that much, so no. it's like now Who's I have to be idiot? not impressed by Elvis. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, I you know I look back and I you I think all actors do that. First of all, they think the last part is their last part. You know, they'll never get another 